to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Men and women who know how to pray, once it is night, you wake up with a sense of responsibility. Give me bread, give me tea. Oh God, the other day you gave me five naira. Where will you increase it to 15 naira? There is a place for that. But I'm talking of men who would carry the map of Bonnie Island. Put it on your prayer altar. Shaka Tosca Papa. Every Tetesita. Lord Refiner. Lord Fire. Lord Salvation. Let the fire of God fall on the street. This is how revivals are perfect. This is how revivals are preserved. You must trust God for grace to conquer gluttony. Gluttony. You must trust God to return back to the old pattern. The ancient art of prayer with fasting. Not prayer while browsing. Not prayer while pitching a call that you turn the place in your house upside down and your house becomes an altar where angels are used to coming and going because they found out that an altar of prayer has been built from that place. Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, it's time for a move once again in Bobby Island. Thank God for what they have seen. Thank God for the sacrifices of the fathers and the veterans in the land. Once again.
for the preservation of the move of God across a territory is the priesthood ministry of prayer. You can sit down, my dear people, just focus on your right. Number two, very quickly, the second key, if you want to see the move of God preserved in your territory, there must be a regular convergence of believers within this territory to be trained, to be equipped, to be mentored, and to be empowered. There must be platforms across your territory that allows for a regular convergence of believers. Whether it is church activities, whether it is non-denominational activities, there has to be a platform that allows for regular convergence of believers for the purpose of training, discipleship, mentorship, and empowerment. Community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. When people live in isolation to a larger body of truth, it becomes easy for them to be a prey. Community living helps you and gives you the strength to sustain kingdom values. Is someone learning tonight? The second key, a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, to be equipped, to be mentored, and to be empowered. Acts chapter 2, from verse 42 down to 47. This was the blueprint that the early church received. This was the blueprint that the early church handed down to us. Acts chapter 2, please, from verse 42. Help us, media. Acts chapter 2, from verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Notice the content of their gathering. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Down to 47, next verse. And all that believe were together. All that believe were? Talk to me, all that believe were? Community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. So when you are weak, you will hear your neighbor pray and he can encourage you. He can tell you, let's go to church. And you want to give an excuse, there is no fuel. He says, no problem, my car is available. Community living will crush the spirit of backsliding and complacency. The Bible says, and all that believe were together and had all things common. Uh-huh. And sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Two more verses. And they continuing how long? Please talk to me. Continuing. There has to be a daily contact. It may not be so for church, but the family unit is the basic unit where there must be a daily contact that makes for continuity of spirituality. Many of you remember this is how we were raised to night prayers or morning prayers or both. A time when they share the truth. Now you have children reproduce that same result. Don't just give them secular education alone. You must connect them to the God that lifted you to this level. They should not know book alone. They must know God in the beginning. God. We live in a world today where when a child is educated, master's PhD, no matter how deprived he is spiritually, we say it's all right. It's just that he doesn't know God, but he's a very serious person. What is our young speak of seriousness? In one day, the powers of darkness can sweep that destiny. And every level of 10, 20 years can be over. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Are we together now? They continuing daily with one accord in the temple and in breaking of bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. As a result, 47, watch this. Praising God and having 
faithful with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. How long? Because they met daily, he added daily. If they meet yearly, he will add yearly. They will meet you at the frequency of your seriousness. If you do not believe that one, you are not a Christian. 
If you do not believe Jesus is God, He came manifest in the flesh, came as a propitiation, a substitutionary sacrifice, redeeming men through His blood, His death, His burial, His resurrection, His ascension, His enthronement. If you do not believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if you do not believe in the virgin birth, if you do not believe in the power of the world and the power of the Holy Spirit to transform and guide believers as they sojourn, if you do not believe in God's agenda, global missions of winning the world, if you do not believe in influence, the strategy that enthrones Christ across his, in, the strata, if you do not believe in all of these things, then you do not believe he is coming back. You are not a Christian. It's as simple as that. The cure for this disparity of errors is to have a methodical template. Maybe not the same. Right now there are vaccines for COVID-19 by different companies. But principally, I believe that the pharmacology of those vaccines are similar. Otherwise, they would not be allowed to administer because if you give me an option to take this one or that one, it means that the pharmacology is not so different as far as how it will work in my body. I should be able to attend any church within Bonnie and know that my Sunday service will not be a waste. I should be able to attend any service and know that in that service there will be prayer, that there will be worship, that there will be giving, that there will be the world. That the world will be targeted at winning souls, transforming believers, and empowering people. Regardless what someone, it must contain these things. Provision for sinners to be saved, a provision for believers to be transformed, and a provision for believers to be empowered. The greatest need of a non-believer is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. The greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. This must be captured upon our two things, regardless the church, regardless the assembly. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Number three. Are we learning something tonight? The third key that preserves revivals and the move of God across our territory is that there must be an open display of real miracles signs and wonders that go beyond the church wall. There must be a manifestation of the wonder-working power of God in miracles, signs and wonders beyond the church walls. Bless this morning as I heard the stories of men and women we were told stories of people who defied death in your land. We were told stories of people who defied all kinds of things. Men who spoke to your seeds and gave them borders by prophecy to not cross beyond. There must be a restoration. Let me tell you this. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe Jesus is alive. A territory that does not see Jesus in action will not believe that Jesus is alive. John 4, 48. Please give it to us. John 4, 48. Read it, please, you're a Christian and you can see it projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. We live in a world today that is full of options. Options that bear the Christian faith to the face. We must present a Jesus with proofs. We must present a faith life that is attractive enough to compel all and sundry. The woman said, come see a man 
that told me what I have done. When one man, man in Gadara, one man, man, God delivered single handedly, his miracle was responsible for the salvation of 10 cities. One miracle. Why are miracles important? They create convictions in the hearts of communities. Miracles create convictions. They help people know that Jesus is alive. Even if they refuse to acknowledge his lordship, they go back with their hearts burning within them. Are we blessed? This is why we need the anointing. Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. Acts 19, let's hurry up. Verse 11. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of the inhabitants of Bonny Island. Go ahead, media. Next verse. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took it upon themselves to call over them which had an evil spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus saying we are joined by Jesus who Paul preached they thought it was magic and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. What happened to them? The evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, Joshua Selman I know. He says, who are you? That means while you are praying and preparing your spirit, there is a register in the spirit that is showing your consistency. It is not only angels that are seeing it, demons are seeing it too. You don't just come on stage and say, be healed, be delivered. Just because you read it in the Bible, there must be a track record of consistently building yourself in the spirit. Let's read on. We're reading to 20. Please give it to us quickly. The Bible says, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Imagine that kind of reproach to the name of the Lord. That we are in a meeting like this and you see me running out naked to the streets of God. What happened? They said two fierce people under the influence of spirits and people outside keep hearing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, and Joshua Selman is running out naked. Say, I, I better run out naked than to die. What a reproach to the name of the Lord. The Bible says this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and show their deeds. 19. Many of them which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and it was 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books. 50,000 pieces of silver worth of magic books because there was an open display of miracles of science and of wonders. So mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. I had the honor and the privilege of praying for all kinds of people, Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, traditionalists, and every time they come to me, they don't care whether they are Christians or Muslims. They just say we have heard. Let me tell you this, in the presence of real results, people will keep every excuse and every prejudice. The reason why people bring all those things is because they don't trust that your results will work. Are we together? Open display of real miracles. One of the things you are going to be receiving tonight by the grace of God 
is an impartation of grace for signs and for wonders. There has to be people in, we need to be hearing from all over this country. This happened in Bonnie. Just when we're about to reconcile, we hear that another one has happened. That a popular man, man on your street, while fellowship was happening, he made a mistake and touched the gate of the church. Just the gate, the power of God electrocuted him there, and he came and met him in his sound man. As that testimony is going all over Bonnie, then we say again that three dead people from different points came back to life. Let me tell you this. You will pull a level of force that you will wake up in the morning and find people kneeling in front of churches and say, I don't know who is the pastor of this church, but I know I will not rise up from my knees. The God who did this, may he come and change my life. Listen to me. A hospital never goes to look for patients. They just put enough equipment and patients from everywhere, even if they cannot stand, they carry them and take them to that hospital. When you become like that hospital, men will defy everything and they will look for you. May it be like that for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. What is the fourth key? as far as preserving revivals is concerned. The fourth key is the intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. The intentional mentorship of younger believers and younger ministers for the purpose of legacy and succession. On the island, do not let your fathers transit in the faith if Christ tarries without raising and raising sufficient young people. And the key is not to wait until you are old. I received a very humbling orientation. One of your plans here that to shut it down for 30 days, it takes at least two years of thorough preparation. That's how it must be. Fathers of faith in the land, may I beseech you by the mercies of God. Do not wait until you are 50, 60, 70. When you do not have that strength again. No. Let's begin to train the young ones from infancy. Have you seen how they train footballers in many countries? Many of you are football fans. You notice that when the professionals are coming, there are some young boys that also wear jerseys. Have you seen that happen? Those young boys you see, are the great footballers, soccer players of tomorrow. They don't wait until those ones retire. Right from infancy, they identify them, give them scholarships while they are schooling, they are training. We will employ that same strategy. There must be people who are anointed to do children ministry in Bonnie Island. And don't laugh at them and feel they are just children. That person you are pushing away may be Samuel the prophet tomorrow, whose word will not fall to the ground. And all oh Eli, if you are not sensitive to train Samuel, when you are born, Israel will have no priest and no prophet. One of the major assignments of a true father of faith and a true veteran of the gospel is that you must look back and see people you are reproducing your ideologies, your values, your disciplines, and your trainings. At every level, you can start. A father should not wait until his son is 18 years before he starts telling him this is right and wrong. In our stubborn world today, by 18 years, most things have become like metal in the head of the children. At age two, three, as you take your offering and take a seat, you give that same child, Junior, hold yours, watch what that is doing. That is going to sow into the, man, the, the life of the man of God. And you see the little boy do it. I come from the north and they practice this very strongly in Islam. Right from infancy, they begin to raise them with such fierce, unrivaled discipline. We must restore the mentorship of young people. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, it says the same, commit thou to faithful men who shall also be able to teach others. It's the reason why you must allow people to go through process in life so that they can learn the pathway. Don't just give people results without experiences because what they learn in the process is greater than the result. It is from the knowledge of the process they can mentor others. Are we together? When you are about to pray, let the children pray too. They can break their fast by 12 or even if it's 11 o'clock. But let them participate no matter how small. Let them be part of that history of growth and transformation. Train up a child, the Bible says, in the way he should go. That means you must know the way yourself. The way he should go. He says that when he is old, he will not turn away from it. The next reverence, Bishop Ajayi Crowders, James Johnson, the next T.L. Osborne, the next Kenneth Higgins, the next Ayah Babalolas must cast their process in Pony Island immediately. Immediately. Teach them to sit down and read books. When they are loitering around, tell them, young man, I love you and I love your destiny. You say you have the call of God upon your life. Your first assignment is not invitations to preach. Your first assignment is the cave of Aduna. That's where men are made. The stage is not for training. The stage is for execution. Go and sit down. Yes, I know you are a great man of God. Run away from anybody who does not have a history of service. That beauty. People don't just become. Many years ago, I had the honor and the privilege of playing this keyboard you are seeing. I used to play for it a, a prison ministry. They were part of the people who went to preach for Pastor John later in the years in prison. We didn't just become what we became. No. From one service, you are in a subgroup. You are joining like this gentleman now, doing something. One day in your little group, they will say, help us close the service with prayer. Then you now bring what happened in your secret place to that prayer group. You pray for 10 minutes and everybody begins to sense there's something about this man. Next time they'll say, okay, we'll give you 15 minutes. And while that happens, God will be speaking to your pastor and say, the next time you see this man, when there is a meeting outside, give him five minutes. That's how people are trained. All this new success of getting up overnight is the reason why a lot of people rise up and crash down. When God leaves you, he supports you. But when you jump up, he will come down. Let us help younger ministers, but not condemn them. Let me speak to the fathers respectfully. The younger ministers will have a lot of mistakes. The younger ministers will have a lot of help. They have zeal, but they may not have wisdom. We must have the heart and the patience because also God helped us. We learned on the job. He trained us, but nobody is ever trained enough. As you start, you will see the need for adjustment in character, in discipline, in excellence. Let's not be too harsh on people who are coming up. They may have prayer, the grace to pray, the grace to prophesy, but you may see tokens of pride here and there. Don't discourage them. The grace is genuine. Just call them to order and adjust the excesses. Because in discouraging them, the devil will give them alternatives. And tomorrow when they still become great without your influence, they will fight you. When I was about to start ministry, I wrote a letter to so many men of God across the globe. Then internet was not really, and then phones was, but I wrote a letter to many ministers. I believe for justifiable reasons, many of, many of them probably did not even reach them. But there was one man who replied me back. He replied me handwritten, and he became a common mentor up until his death, Dr. Miles Monroe. Right from Bahamas, a young boy wrote him 
I said, this is what God wants to make out of my life. And I was surprised when the post office reached me. And I went and I saw a letter. Not that the secretary wrote and he just signed. He wrote it by himself and signed. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, as you lift me, grant me the grace that no matter how busy I am, let me also be able to look back and see someone who is coming up. Because this thing is a relay. Others ran it and gave us, whether we like it or not. War times a man who comes back and there is nobody to pass that baton. Listen to me. I had a meeting a few months, I would say, the great servant of God in this nation. And he was telling me that one of the veterans of the gospel, I will not mention his name for respect and honor, he began to lament and said, our days are getting close and yet there are not sufficient people to collect these matters. The grace that made us to lift wheelchairs on the safe ground, there are not faithful people who have been mentored. Are we going to go to the grave like that? One of the men that I met before he went to be with the Lord, I remember he had met a lot of God's generals. And I asked him, I said, what did they say? And I remember him telling me, he said, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumron, he said, when you are old, do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men, train them, and pass this battle, because you also, you receive it. Let me tell you this, whether we like it or not, the cloud is already changing across Africa. Oh yes. In the next 10, 20 years, there will be a complete spiritual shift in the continent of Africa in Christ's hands. It's not prophecy. It's what wisdom and understanding of the nature of the basis of life. But the question is that no we'll be faithful men. Gehazi would have been the one to receive that grace from Elijah. But his unfaithfulness and his greed robbed him of that opportunity. Younger ministers, please hear me. Let me beseech you by the mercies of God. Humble yourself. Remain in the wilderness until your season of appearing. This is for fame. This is for popularity. We must love God beyond it. God will lift you beyond your imagination. Do you know when I started ministry? I hope I'm not wasting your time. When I started ministry, I stand before the God of heaven. I did not know that they used to give people anything called honorarium. That when you preach, they can package sugar cane and uh, mango and banana in a bag and say, thank you for coming. It was never the motivation. It was a desire to see Jesus lifted. A desire to see Jesus glorified. I didn't even know that men used to have protocol and PA to move around and secretary. No! We were driven by genuine hunger. All adulterated hunger. Please let's be careful those we listen to. Let's be careful what we hear. So that wrong seeds, many sincerely so, are not planted in us that corrupt our desire for the one. The purity of your motive is one of the determinants of your usability as far as territorial revival is concerned. You should not just be available, you must be useful. Number five. The third key for preserving territorial revivals is called influence. Now, this is the part that affects everybody. Influence. This has to do with God raising people and putting them in high places. Influence is very important. What is influence? The ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies and your value systems without using force, without using cruelty. It's called influence. The ability to compel men to buy into your value system, to buy into your ideologies without using force, without using cruelty, is called influence. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Influence is very important. Right for reference, we may not have the time to read it. Acts chapter 18 from verse 10 to 18. Acts chapter 18, 10 to 18. 
we need influence. You must pray that the leaders of the oil companies, the captains of industry, the kings and the nobles in the land, you must pray that God captures their hearts. When a king is saved, his land is saved. When a CEO is saved, everybody under him is saved. Rather than trying to save people one by one, we must trust God to capture the kings of the territory so that the territory will come under the influence of Christ. The last point we're about to pray. What is the last key that preserves territorial revival? An open display of love. Hear the body island, hear the body of Christ. An open display of love without preference, religious biases, or cultural biases. An open display of love. Not just love to Christians, not just love to church members. An open display of love without preferences, without religious biases, without cultural biases. Where we contribute to developing communities, we contribute to blessing people, Christians, Muslims, unbelievers alike. God is not the God of Christians alone. God is the God of all flesh. And we must be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way beyond the walls of culture, beyond the walls of religion. If we only show kindness and love to Christians, then there is a message we are communicating to non-Christians. There must be a dimension of the love of God that must be enjoyed by everybody in this island. So you can see a traditionalist, and even though he's not born again, and every opportunity you find you preach the gospel to him, but then listen carefully, you can shake him. How are you? God bless you, my brother. I'm going to church. Would you like to come? No, 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 I'm not going. Anyway, that's all right. I'll pray for you. You crack a joke, not that you turn and say shame on you. And he says, shame on you too. Love. There are miracles that happen to all. A major part of today was a downpour of rain. And I did not see the rain falling on Christian homes alone. I saw that the rain came upon everyone. Your sea here, your rivers are full of fish. The fish does not run away from unbelievers and go to Christian beds. It is a provision and the love of God to everyone. Whilst we ultimately pray and intercede and press that the entire land comes to Christ, we must be able to show love without prejudice. We must show love, pure love, love for people. It may be the love of God that is displayed that will lead someone who has no business giving his life to Christ. But he will say, look, I am not a Christian, but I love you. I've heard of what is happening in this church. I've heard of what is happening in this community. It's not just by giving food and all of that. Just a, a warm display of love that someone in the office is crying. And you come to him and say, what is wrong? And he says, don't, don't mind me, this whole thing, I'm tired of my life. And you don't look at him and say, you see, shame on him. I told you to come to Jesus, he will pay the price and don't pay you. You come to him and say, look, it doesn't matter what the problem is, whether it's your fault. Let's cry together. Let me help you clean your tears before. Have you eaten? And the message says, well, wow. what church did you say you attend? I will tell you that later. Let's talk about Jesus and your own life now. And at the end of it, you will get to answer for as long as I live. I will follow your God. Your God will be my God. This is where many times we fail as great people. We do a lot of religious things. But when it has to do with showing love, we miss out on it. Six keys. Bonnie Island. Practice these keys. And even after 30 years when we come here, we will still find 
find the fire of revival for you. And if they ask you how come you have sustained it, just like you found the technology to sustain your environment and bring that put it as a template for spiritual growth. Teach it to the young ones. When the fathers are going and they see the clouds coming, don't just give people money as an inheritance or land. Give them this present. Teach your children. Teach your children's children. Please rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Have a few minutes and we're done. How many of you here came with your prayer request? Did you come with your prayer request? Is it alright if I ask the ushers to just collate it? We are going to pray. We have a few minutes. We will be very, very fast. If there are no ushers, let's just have one or two volunteers. And then just, you can just, all of you can pass your request to the, the last aisle. And then lift it up. Let someone just call. Let's collect it. Don't worry. Nobody's reading your request. It's between you and the Lord. But while that is happening, please I'd like you to open your one minute and thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight. If someone pray, please don't be distracted. Pray, pray, pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. The entrance of your word gives light, understanding to the simple.
You are going to pray for every family here on the island. Father, fresh fire on every family. Let it start from the home. Pray for your children. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Say, Lord, say. Are there people of prayer here? Please make sure you pray.
very quickly there are three or four things that we're going to do the next 10 minutes or so and then we'll wrap up my final session with us number one we have this prayer it's a representation of the hunger the needs of God's people it says unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come I want you to believe that these Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more. Number two, I'm going to be praying, administering the healing and the delivering power of God. Sadly, we may not have time to take testimonies because I understand you have a coffee and we must respect it. Number three, which is very important, there are graces and mantles that must fall on someone in this place. Maybe not everybody, but I know for sure there are people who came here. You must carry something. And then number four, I had a vision early this morning. I was sleeping, very tired and I was sleeping. And all of a sudden, in that vision I was taken to your seat. And I saw what looked like a, you know how fishes come out, very big fish. Came out out of the river, went back again. Came out the second time, went back again. Came out the third time, went back again. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, this is the Spirit that sits upon this territory. And we pray. Because there is a prophetic push that this land was received a restoration of the life the fire of the gospel the passion and the hunger for the things of god i told you there are spirits that interrupt the program of god we do all this within the next 10 minutes please let your heart now let me say this, if anyone is under the anointing, whether you are an usher or not, please, be your brother's keeper. Anyone is under the anointing, we may not have time to bring them out, except if I ask so, just help them, they just lie quietly, so that they don't enjoy themselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you ready to pray? Father, that which must come upon my life tonight, to change my destiny and to set me on fire, I receive by faith. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray, please pray.
name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ like Paul would over the church in Ephesus. And I call upon the God of my covenant that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, everything written here that is a prayer request may be turned tonight into a testimony. Let impossible situations be turned around. In the name of Jesus. For some of you on your way going home, you will begin to meet some of these answers. Let impossible situations be turned around by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, may nothing written here remain in the life of the world. Every human agent that must be in partnership with God to make his request come to pass, we declare that connection is made now. Everything to be restored here, be restored in Jesus' name. Everything you're tired of seeing that needs to live your life, I agree with you that as you wake it goodbye this night, it wakes you back forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen very quickly. I want to make an altar call before we finish up the invitation. There are people here on the balcony following online from whatever nation and right here outside, inside, the saying, Apostle, I do not want you to end this meeting and leave this now without giving me an opportunity. For all of the sessions we've had, people come to Jesus and let the night be no different. Whilst you heard me, whilst you heard me speak, the Spirit of the Lord began to tell you that could it be that you are part of this great army that God is raising? But it starts with a genuine encounter with Jesus. Two categories I'm going to call in one. You've never encountered Jesus genuinely as Lord and Savior. Knowing Jesus as healer does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as a prophet does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as a good man does not bring you salvation. Knowing Jesus as God does not bring you salvation. There is no other name under heaven, the Bible declares, that has been given unto men by which we must be saved. And then you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I gave my heart to the Lord. I cannot truly say I'm standing strong in the faith. These two groups of people, I'm going to count one to five very quickly. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat up, down, outside, run and come and stand before the Lord here. A count of one to five. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war tonight. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. People are coming. If you're coming, come. Run to Jesus.
and on all of my works. I want you to lift your right hand and every one of you lift it high to the heavens. And I want you to say this prayer of faith after me, let it be from the depth of your heart. You are not beside the point, Jesus is here. Tell after him, Lord Jesus. What was I saying? right now. 
Father, I'm still the number 38. There are 38 people here. The grace that is coming upon you is a, a grace for encounters and the secret place. Help them, please. Help them, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, help them, please. From the front to the back, my left to my right, Father, in the name of Jesus, as many as must drink of this grace, I declare may that fire. Just be there. Just have 
the fivefold now. There needs to be stamina. There needs to be endurance. I want to pray for you. Every ministry requires stamina. There are arsenals from hell that will arise. It takes discipline. It takes stamina. It takes diligence. Small a reason to bring divisions. 
This must be a new season of embracing ourselves regardless of the limitations. We are not all perfect. We are a project. But God has shown us mercy. And we must carry that mentality and stand as one body, one Lord, one faith, and even one baptism as the Bible teaches. It is the same heaven all of us are going into. And so we must stand to see that the gospel advances, but we must stand as a corporate people and declare over the land. And so I have asked the servants of God representing the men and women in this land to come stand with me in agreement as we pray this one prayer. Your assignment is to agree and release your faith as we shout Amen. Are we in agreement? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We bring before you this entire island, Bonny Island, a land that you have loved, an island that you have invested your power upon. We speak right now by the Spirit to the spirits that operate across this territory. Lift up your hands.
of Jesus Christ. I pray for your young people. They will be responsible gentlemen. The place will be established on time. I pray for your women. May they be responsible ladies that become mothers, that become grandmothers. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the land. We command a reign of prosperity like never before. We pray for the sea. We command the sea. Let me pray for you. You can't be healed from evil when you come to this land. I came into this land with honor. The Bible says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. By the privilege of the election of grace, I lift my voice to the God who called me and sent me. Standing in partnership with every man of God here, may the blessing that the Lord has placed on my life, may it rest upon your life. beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again Hi.